All right, guys, welcome to episode nine. I'm pretty sure it's nine now. Can't really keep track. I always forget. Bad memory. Anyway, here's the end of month recap for the month of April for the Seattle Mariners. We are 11 and 13 and fourth in the division, six and a half games back of the AL West leading Astros, who are 18 and seven. So I have a lot of things to talk about in this video. It might be long. If it is, I'm sorry, but I have lots and lots to talk about. So let's get right into it. I have all our team rankings compared to the rest of the league. So let's go over those and see how we're doing. Um, batting average 15th at 254. On base percentage 23rd at 304. Slugging percentage 6th at 419. Hits 19th at 217. Walks 30th at 56. Strikeouts 3rd at 160 runs 17th at 98 home runs tied for six at 33 rbis 18th at 94 stolen bases eighth at 18th and martin has 11 of them airs we're tied for 27th at 19 airs fielding percentage we're at 29th at 97 or point 97.9 that's all the hitting and fielding rankings at pitching rankings ERA we are tied or 15th for at 3.48 saves we are tied for 27th at three blown saves we're tied for 14th at three as well home run hits allowed we are at 20th for 228 and runs allowed we are 13th at 94 home runs allowed we are tied for first at 14th so what I get from that is we're not bad we have kind of in the middle of the pack for everything or not everything for most things um there are things that are a bit of concern like the on base percentage at 304 that is very low that needs to be higher especially for a, you know an average for a whole entire team as far as that goes i have a bunch of numbers um so for all our stats for our prospects and for our major league lineups so top 10 prospects right now there are two guys um I can't, Nidart wasn't on there, and then Rizzo wasn't on there. So there's two guys that I found. Gurriel was one of the guys that we signed that's going to take Rizzo's place in the top 10, and then Zach Lee is going to take Nidart's place in the top 10. So let's go over their stats. Kyle Lewis, the outfielder, is betting 338 with a 416 slugging percentage, 416 on base percentage with a 441 slugging percentage. Tyler O'Neill is betting 169 with a 260 on base with a three, or 231 slugging. Sorry, I'm talking really fast, but I have lots to talk about, so if I mess up, I'm sorry. Drew Jackson, batting 269 with a 329 on base, 359 slugging. Zach Lee, 22 innings pitched, um, 22 hits allowed, 17 strikeouts, 16 walks, for a 5.73 ERA and a 1.73 whip. Not too good. Luis Gohara, 25 innings pitched at a 34 hits allowed, 23 strikeouts, 25 walks, for a 7.20. ERA and a 2.36 whip. Alex Jackson batting 3.28 with a 3.62 on base with a 5.47 slugging. Dan Vogelbach batting 2.87, 3.85 on base, 4.83 slugging. DJ Peterson, um, he's batting 2.89 um, with his slugging. Sorry, I'm like swallowing stuff. Slugging at or on base percentage at 3.40 with a slugging of. 457. Griel, 261 on base, 261 average, 352 on base, 457 um, slugging. So yes, that is our prospects right now. Some guys are doing good, really good. Some guys are kind of doing pretty bad. As far as our lineup goes, Martin is batting 369 with a 409 on base, 563 slugging. Ineta is batting 269 with a 296 on base, with a 538 slugging. Cano is batting two. 234 with a 267 on base with a 415 slugging. Cruz is batting 263 with a 324 on base with a 558 slugging. Seeger is batting, a, batting 274 with a 340, 343 on base, 580, 537 slugging. Lind is batting 235, 325 on base, 324 slugging. Marte Betting a dismal 205 with a 241 on base with a 313 slugging. Gutierrez is betting a 241, 268 on base, 430 slugging. Aoki 237, 301, and 263. So that wraps up 
all the numbers, all the stats that I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys all these notifications that are popping up and that you see on my screen. So completed, uh, Padres, Car Carter Caps, relief pitcher that they got from the Marlins, managed roster, um, there you can see all my prospects, you know, or not even prospects, but just stats in general that they think that I should see from the farm director. Um, so there you see, I'm not really going to read them off. I'll let you guys look at them. You can pause them and look at them if you want. So there's that. Um, I have a scouting notification. Jerome Hayward completed his infielder assignment, completed outfielder assignment, Raleigh Minton. Um, and Eric Cruz is now done scouting Torres. So let's take a look at Torres's, um, where is he at? Let's take a look at his profile now. Let's sort this out. I know he's 22. Um, where is he, 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 there he is, right there. So he has a 65 potential. Um, so he's kind of a little below average. He'll be like a little bit above average. So kind of just like maybe a guy like Iwakuma. Anyway, that's it for scouting right now. I'll come back to that later. So yes, like I said, all our stats and rankings are kind of in the middle of the road. Some of them are. Um, I told you, I showed you guys the scouting. I'm going to go back to that later. Right now, I'm going to make some moves, and I'm going to make some moves in-house, not out-of-house. So don't get all too excited or too worried yet. So Alan Webster has been struggling this entire month. He's 1-3, 23 innings pitched, 26 strikeouts, 12 walks, 587 ERA, and a 174 whip. Let's take a look at his hits because I know he struggled with his hits a lot. So he has 28 hits allowed in 23 innings. So that's kind of a problem. So we're going to go ahead and send him down to triple A. He actually doesn't have any options right now. So he's going to go through waivers. So if someone decides to put a claim on him, then they can claim him. Um, after that, I actually have a starter in triple A. Nate Carnes here, 37 innings, 39 Ks. 12 walks for a .73 ERA and a 1.38 whip. He's going to come and take spot in um, Webster's uh, place. So I have to clear up some 40-man room, or some 40-man roster room here. So I'm going to go ahead, where is he at, Nate Carnes? There he is. So I'm going to add him to the 40-man, and I'm going to go ahead and call him up and place him in the rotation. So that's the first move I'm going to make. My bullpen is doing okay. There's a couple guys. It's hard to tell with the bullpen early on because they really don't have that many innings. So like you see, Blake Parker has a 587 ERA, but he only has 7, point, seven and two-thirds innings pitched. So it's kind of hard to judge. So I think I'm going to leave the bullpen for now. I thought about sending down Diaz and bringing up maybe Storin or someone else, maybe Nuno, because he's doing really well. But I'm going to give it a little bit longer as far as the bullpens go, just to like let those stats even out and see you know how they do with more innings pitched. So, Carnes is in the rotation now. I'm hoping no one puts a claim on to Webster because I want him back. I just think he needs a little bit more time to, you know, kind of figure everything out for himself. Zanino is batting absolutely god-awful, uh, a 128 batting average. So, he needs to go down and he needs to get some reps in the minor leagues. So, I'm going to bring back Clevenger. He's batting 430, 435 in uh, AAA so far. So, I'm going to leave him there on the bench for now. Um, as far as that goes, I have 23 guys now at AAA. Um, another move I wanted to make, Catel Marte is really struggling. He had a bunch of errors last week in that last episode. So I'm going to go ahead and send him down right now and let him figure out his hitting because his hitting is really struggling. And I'm going to call up Guriel. And I'm going to explain this. Actually, I have to figure out who I want to take off the 40-man roster as of right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take off Brantley. But he needs to go through waivers, so I'm not going to take him off. You know what? Actually, I am going to... Let's see, actually. I want to... I'm going to take Freeman off 40 mans because he's doing... No, nah, he's not doing too good, so I don't think anyone is going to put a claim on him. And I'm going to bring up Guriel, and I'm going to tell you why. His stats in AAA are 261 with a 352 on base, and that's really in a 457 slugging. But his on base percentage is what really is making me call him up because our on base percentage as a team right now on the Mariners is not good whatsoever. So I need, I need to get some guys who are going to be able to get on base 
and get that job done. So that's why he's being called up. Um, Marte, I'm gonna plug him in down here. I'm I'm gonna play with the uh, the lineup, you know, to my liking and Triple uh, A and maybe Double A if I need it. Um, as far as that goes, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right now because I don't want to make too long a video and babble on about stuff I don't need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause and I'm gonna make some moves, some more moves to my liking, and then I'm gonna show you guys. So hold on a second. All right, guys, so I'm back. I'm really just gonna make maybe one may possibly probably not two out of house moves and one of them is going to be bringing in Tommy Pham from the Cardinals for Seth Smith, uh, Camonero and Poloni. Poloni as you can see he's 26 year old first baseman 63 overall. I haven't been single A he's not really I don't plan on him being a big part of this franchise or this team so I think it's okay to get rid of him. Uh, Camonero he's really struggling he only has two innings pitched um, he has some decent potential. I think he had a decent year with Pittsburgh last year, but again, I'm going to go in and send him back to the NL Central. You know, I think he's a better fit there. I don't think he's a better, a good fit for us. Because um, that's, I mean, for NL, for having those stats in a, you know, in, a, in the National League, I think he might, his stats are probably going to be inflated if he pitches in a good, solid AL West. And then Seth Smith, um... I mean, obviously, he only has eight at-bats, and he's only batting 250, but he is 33 years old with a C potential and a 66 overall, whereas Tommy Pham has the same amount of money, really only $10,000 more, um, a 28 overall with a C potential, um, or 28 age, he's 28 years old, <laughs> I'm so tired, I'm sorry, uh, six poten or C potential and a 69 overall, and uh, as you can see, he has he's basically under... Um, team control for the next six years whereas Seth Smith is not so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the deal on this trade or pull the trigger on this trade and I'm gonna get Tommy Pham and um so as you can see he's I mean he's batting 265 through 68 at bats and he has a high really high on base percentage so I think he's a good addition um like I said I'm looking for really just on base guys and he'll he'll probably be a platoon guy in the outfield um but I think this is a good addition to our already decent team. I'm really just looking for guys who are going to have some on-base percentage possibilities and you know that will really help our team in the long run I think. So because of that move I do need to fill out the rosters here because I am missing a reliever in AAA now. So I'm going to go ahead and call someone up from AA and I'm really just going to take the guy with like the best stats really that I think can fit in at AAA and I think it's going to be this guy Tyler Midge or Kmidge. Um, 11-8 in a third inning pitch with a 2.38 ERA with a .88 whip. So he's going to be Camonero's replacement, if I can find him here. Where is he at? There he is right there. So he's going to bump up the AAA. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put David Rollins to AA and see how he fares as of, or for now. So like I said in the opening of this video, I wrote off all the prospects stats. Uh, Tyler O'Neill is really struggling. He had 65 at bats, a 169 average. And Alex Jackson plays outfield as well. He's one of the top 10 prospects as well. 64 at bats, 3 home runs, 15 RBIs, 328. So I'm going to go ahead and switch them because O'Neill was in there. So I switched them. So that's really the only changes I'm going to make in AA on that roster. Um, as far as that, it's really just getting this pitcher to fill that hole right there. So other than that, I think we're good. I don't want to go crazy and start making a bunch of moves here um if someone claims happens to claim webster and they take him away from the mariners really my plan is to call up leblanc i was thinking about having him in the starting rotation at the beginning of the year and then i would just have to sign a free agent pitcher starting pitcher and i think who i'm going to sign is wandy rodriguez because he is relatively cheap as you can see 2.3 million just on a one-year deal because he'll probably retire he's a decent pitcher i think he might be able to um, produce a little bit for us. He has struggled the past couple of years with Texas and Pittsburgh, but he used to be a really good pitcher back in the day with Houston, and I still think he has one solid year left in him. Other than that, really everyone else is just really expensive, and um, I don't, I'm not really seeing any prospects in here besides Joey Wentz. So, um, so yeah, that's really all I'm going to do as of right now. So, I think this might be the rest, or this might be the end of the video 
like I said, well, actually, I have to go back to Scotty for you guys. Never mind. So, before I start assigning, um, like, personal players, I'm just going to go ahead and give them assignments to go ahead and scout regions like I did before, just so I can have a very um, broad range of players here. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cruise as a pitcher pro pitching scout. So, I'm going to go ahead and tell him to look for some pitchers in the west. Um, I like lefties with a lot of velocity, so I'm going to tell him to look for that. Um, Minton, Raleigh Minton, uh, positional player internationally. I'm going to tell him to look for an infielder with contact and speed internationally, and Hayward in the west, position player, or the east actually. I'm going to go ahead, change that to east, tell him to look for the outfield with um, power and arm strength. See if I can find another corner outfielder out there. Uh, Desalvo is still on his assignment. As you can see, his efficiency is kind of lower than these guys, so it will take him a little bit longer. And after this scouting assignment, I'll probably start going in and scouting individual players to try and find some studs so I can draft them. So that's really it for the video or this this episode right now. As you can see, I mean, I really have everything taken care of that I want to take care of. My plan for Walker is if he starts struggling again, I'm going to have to call up someone else. Brad Mills is doing really good in double A. He might be a possible candidate as well as would want. So we'll have to see what happens with Webster first, though. Hopefully he makes it through waivers and goes down to triple A. Um, so that's really it, guys. Um, that's kind of like what I'll do at the end of every single month. Kind of, And maybe, you know, if I'm really struggling or something or I think it needs to be done, I'll do it halfway through the month or, you know, whatever. Um, it's kind of just something that, I'll be able to tell when it needs to be done and when it doesn't need to be done. So, other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is kind of like something, like I said, that I think sets me apart from other people, and other people don't do this. They just blatantly sim through months and months and months and don't really look at this stuff. But I do think that this stuff is important, and it needs to be look at, looked at as far as our goals go. Um, as you can see, um, we have four double plays in a game. That's really it. Those are season goals. So hopefully we'll get hit more of these goals and hopefully we'll hit our goals so our job security goes up and we can stay the general manager of the Seattle Mariners. Other than that, the next episode will be Nate Carnes' season debut taking on the Oakland Athletics. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys soon.